Only Force of Nature Chapter 3. Don't worry guys, soon in the future it will come back. Chapter 3? Chapter 3! Chapter 3! Where is Force of Nature Chapter 3? Louis Duran here again. I gotta release this movie at, at its best. I'm spending a lot of time on the set. Fire, dude. It was the biggest fire I've ever had. Have you seen? Louis, 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 Louis. I really want to get into the film industry. You know, I gotta make this film one of the best fan films out there. Kaiju 621. Kaiju 621 Red. Kaiju 621. If you're gonna be a film director, get your shit together and act like one. The final verdict is a two out of ten. You couldn't be original enough. Are you fucking kidding me? Are you that fucking ignorant? Stop doing videos. Lewis had the opportunity to put his A game in the film, yet he doesn't. I spoke with Lewis during the making of this review, making it clear that I'm not gonna pull back. Oh, oh man. Oh, hey Lewis! What the what? hell was that? If I become a meme because I ate three Godzilla toys, I want you all to shoot me a deal. Have you ever tried a basketball? Watch this. <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. If I have to be harshly honest, then I have to be. This movie isn't horrible by any chance, but it frustrates me. It frustrates me because of the baffling decisions made by Lewis. I want to help him. I really do. If Lewis just wanted to make a silly toy movie, then go ahead. More power to you. But you want to be a filmmaker when you grow up. And I'm actually going to review this movie. Back when I made my Rise of Destruction review, I was being nice. As nice as I could have been. Since Lewis's audience is made up of mostly children, Anything I comment on this film will probably be seen as hate. So no, I don't hate this movie because I don't want to leave him alone, or because I want to take fan films seriously, or because I want to lose people's respect. I just find it a little unfair how Lewis doesn't have to be creative in making a fan film while there are other unrecognized people out there with actual talent. I'll link some of these good fellas with some great stuff in the description below. I can't deny that Lewis tried. He did. But does that excuse the issues of the film? No, clearly not. Everyone tries when making a film, and knowing that Lewis wants to take films seriously, I really wanted to teach him. So, Lewis, if you're watching, just sit back, relax, grab a cup of purple milk, and listen. Just listen to what I have to say and take my advice, alright buddy? That being said, learn from this review, and realize from my point of view why this film- Hi. You're being sent this video because someone wants to know what the fuck you were thinking. What the fuck was going through your head? What did you think was gonna happen? Are you just a fucking idiot? Do you just not think? What the fuck were you thinking? That's why they're sending you this video because it absolutely fucking baffles them that you did something so fucking retarded. Yo, listen up. Here's the story about a little guy that lives in a blue so this project began when a few trailers came out. When a few trailers came out. When a few... Okay, so a huge problem Lewis has had in the past is trailers. And the overabundance of them. I understand you want to feel like a big Hollywood filmmaker and want to have fun. What's the point of doing a fan film if you can't have fun with it while people are just throwing like, stress on you while you're doing the film? If I'm gonna work on a fan film and I have people like throwing hate comments and just making videos about my fan films like, Oh yeah, Lewis can't do this in effort, blah blah blah. Trust me, I've been trying. So like, if, if that's how you guys are gonna act, then expect no videos from me at all. But... Ego. Lewis Duran has too much pride. Too much pride, in fact. Oh, I've spent three hard, rough years of my life spending all that time editing, sitting, not eating for countless hours, starving, not doing any family activities, mosquitoes eating me up, Ebola. We get it. The movie is coming out. And by the time it actually releases, my expectations have just been shot up. In the end, after the overabundance in marketing, this fan film was just nothing. 
And that's honestly the worst feeling you can have. It wasn't the worst, nor was it prominent. It was just bland. But once again, my opinion is just my opinion. Tarnishing the general outlook of this movie isn't my plan, but knowing me, I usually go harder on things I dislike. And yes, that sounded right. Don't get me wrong, Lewis improved leagues to what he's done before, but that doesn't mean a 9 out of 10 is a justifiable rating for what he really gave us. But I can't help but ask why people are giving this film a 9, 9 out of 10. I mean, if I was Lewis, I'd be like, whoa, 9 out of 10s? 10 out of 10s? I guess I'm doing something right. And my first move would be, wow. If people think this is the best I could do, then I don't have to get any better. Lewis, you have a significant amount of things to improve on. Probably the most fundamental parts of filmmaking. And we aren't gonna see any improvements from Lewis from now on if no one points out the obvious flaws with this movie. So no, I'm not gonna let Lewis off the hook that easy with this review. Well, I'm gonna state every problem I have with this toy movie. Why is there a giant shadow on the sky? Why does this smoke look bad? You could have used this cheap graphic. Why is there a giant hair strand on this guy's back? Lost so many lives that day. No one knows what day you're talking about. There were many days where people died. How does this guy see through these binoculars? Why are these soldiers dressed like 18th century patriot soldiers? Is Mel Gibson commanding them off screen? Why isn't this muzzle flash aligned with the gun? Why is there a hole in this house? Just shoot the shot from the opposite side. No, 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 no. You just don't Why is there silence in between her speaking? Why are there planes, dinosaurs, and a pitchfork inside this guy's room? Stop banging on the door! Stop banging on the- Why did you reuse this line? You have a choice, Tom. Why does this guy sound like he's talking through a Pringles can? Why was this shot film like this? You could have just put the buildings up against the board. The sense of scale is completely gone. Shouldn't this guy be holding a gun? Why does Godzilla 2014 turn into Rise Goji? Was this just lazy editing? Why does this shot play twice? There's too much time in between both of the shots to make the connection it's the same explosion. Also, what's the point of that effect? There's no dust coming out of the water. Water is wet. It's scientifically not possible for dust to fly out of the water. The most painful video on the internet, part two. Mm. <laughs> Let's check this out, shall we? Uh, should be interesting. Lewis didn't have any vision when creating this movie. No direction of what it wanted to be. He even sets up in the last two movies that all these Godzillas are gonna duke it out. Yet half of them are even in the movie all that much. And we're left with Shin Godzilla and Godzilla 2014. Lewis even takes a solid five minutes to establish Rise Goji. Yet all it does is sit in front of a sunset. Looks like we just have to stay strong. You bastard. <laughs> you will pay for what you have done. Those Godzilla will kill you. Let's take a trip back down memory lane. With the first few Godzilla fan films being primarily just tributes to the practical set battles Toho used to do. Most of what was used in this era was figures. It, that hasn't changed a lot. So it had less to do with the story and characters and more to do with the monsters. That's why everything was short and sweet. And a modern example of this is Metlo Kaiju Fan 97's animation film called Godzilla Monster War. <laughs> it didn't overcomplicate itself and it's just a bunch of monsters duking it out. And however, Godzilla Wrath of the Hybrid didn't take this approach. This fan film is an example of placing more screen time on the human characters than the monsters. And that's what made this fan film more unique than the rest. It didn't focus on the usual tropes of just having a big a bo -bo -boom, bo -bo boom monster fight. And after establishing what kind of Godzilla fan films exist, 
Louis Duran had two roads to go down. He had A, a more action-oriented film, where the entire runtime is dependent on the monsters beating the crap out of each other. Or B, a more comprised character-driven movie, where there are human interactions, characterization, character arcs, having the monsters as more of a backdrop for the overall foil of the story. Lewis eventually sat down for days. Months. He's a caveman. And eventually came up with the idea I don't know, let's try both. And for the most part, Lewis stuck with Road A, more monster action heavy film. But since B is interjected a little, it becomes pretty convoluted. I asked some of you on Instagram which movie type is more favorable, and uh, it's pretty half. <laughs> human story in this film felt like an excuse. It felt like Lewis was just leaning into my ear, whispering, Look, this film is better because it has a human story. The human story was the worst part of the film. It was repulsive, confusing, annoying, cringy, Lewis, predictable, lazy, etc. I don't even know the names of these characters. The only way I could find out is by going to the credits. I felt absolutely no sympathy towards these people when I'm supposed to cry. Like it's the end of Toy Story 3. But once again, Lewis can't decide on any of the two roads, and this movie would have been more consistent if it was just a monster bash than this. What the fuck is this cat doing? Apparently this guy's having a stroke for how appalling this movie is. You know, I feel like Lewis could have played up this plot point a bit more. On how like this character has PTSD from when he was manufactured and sold at Target, and then his other soldier buddies were bought by Sid, and then get mutilated, and then dumped in a ditch. I guess his wife is calling him out for how unappreciative he is. I mean, seriously, look how much of an asshole he is. <laughs> And the Oscar goes to... Oh yeah, once again, the voice acting is just laughable. Birds, all sorts of insects. Oh, like who cares about the insects, right? What the fuck? I can't say that Lewis didn't try out making a story, yet his lack of one shows. I mean, all Lewis has really seen for movies is Godzilla and Disney Dinosaur. Ah! Lewis, if you want to know how to write a good story, you know, a good screenplay? I highly suggest watching the movie Chips. I mean, this movie is just a prime example of how characters interact, and the screenplay is just something to take note of here. Fuck. What the fuck is it with you? I was looking at the light. Fuck. There's one thing Lewis has been consistently good with his movies, and that's inconsistency. Lewis forgot to have a predetermined idea of what he wanted to do with the series when it began. The story in this movie just contradicts itself like every five seconds. Speaking of tragedies, when the first two chapters of Force of Nature came out, they were just tragedies. Yeah, you didn't know that? So in Force of Nature Chapter 2, the character John makes it clear that he wants Tom to kill all the monsters, and that value sticks with him after he thinks he's dead. Skip forward time, and now a soldier is infuriated by Tom's view of the monsters deserving a chance. Yeah, not very consistent. What do you want? Oh look, another soldier, so this guy is like, and then this other guy is like, fuck you, and they just start fucking killing each other, and they just start fucking killing each other. This scene just goes on and on and on. Lewis, nobody cares about these global messages about extinction, okay, people only care about the monsters fighting. So I lacked any interest in JC Entertainment's character, but it just staggers me because Lewis, you've got someone who's taken acting classes, has actual experience. I'm perfect for the job. I've already got girls going on the go already. <laughs> no one can beat my outstanding good looks. The clock's ticking. You have to choose fast. And choose me fast you can. And you give him this, 
Shit script. I'm not trying to take a hit at JC Entertainment, okay? James has been in a lot of blockbuster hits like Ready Player One. Take a look at this Oscar worthy writing. I just want you to realize Just that. shut up and get out now! My wife died. This is my reaction. <laughs> I'm pretty sure monsters was said like nine times in this scene. Who's monsters? Monsters. 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 How else is this Godzilla going to wake up? I'm in. What? Dude asks you how to wake up Godzilla and you say, I'm in. He asked you a question. I'm in. And you're just gonna respond to him like that? I'm in. I'm in. Someone's sending you this video because they're absolutely sick of it. Whatever you've been doing, you've been doing it too much. They've warned you. They've told you before. They've asked you politely. They've done whatever they need to do to get the message across to you. And for some reason, you just don't fucking get it, okay? So this video is your last warning. Whatever it is you're doing, you better fucking stop it. You're pissing this person off. They're not one to be fucked with. They're not trifling. They're not okay with it, okay? Do you understand that? I hope you do, because it doesn't really matter. This is your last damn warning. Who are these people? Should I care? No. Gyro Productions voice acting is just awful. Uh, what happened? Did the voice changer just screw up? <laughs> oh, hi. The crazy kaiju here. Maybe instead, you could have cut out this scene of people nobody cares about, and we could have spent more time developing uh, Ready Player One Star James Cooley. The clock's ticking. So, there's a lot of pointless shit like this that could have been easily cut out. RPGs don't work like that, Lewis! So, uh, got this RPG here. So these things are pretty powerful. So my boy Louis Duran over there. Let's go check it out. The best scene in the whole movie I know. Is when this guy wakes up in the jungle after Shin Godzilla's attack. For once, I could just appreciate a little term called a atmosphere. A perfect example of this in Hollywood is this big budget art house film called a Blade Runner 2049. This movie not only had brain melting visuals, but it sounded like God. Atmosphere basically boils down to the mood of the film, and this can be brought up via an immersive soundtrack or a lack of dialogue. When a movie like Blade Runner 2049 can pull you in for a second, in that second, you're living in that world. It allows you to transport yourself into the landscape that Denise Villeneuve created with his bare hands. Atmosphere especially works well when there's no action, no over excessive camera movement, just atmosphere. And the movie that Lewis created is just loud, annoying, flashy. But for a second, he actually took a step back and let the film breathe a little. I actually really love the addition of the cookie sounds. Just do more of this. N not this, just this. Stop constricting your film with noise and explosions because that just drags your viewer out to sleep. Marcus! I was actually enjoying this scene because there were no monsters for more than 30 seconds and I could just <laughs> appreciate it. <laughs> I think this hospital scene is a testament to how much Lewis is unexperienced in writing or screenplay. They start talking about God, the Bible, climate change, yet none of it makes any fucking sense. If we really think about it, Tom, everything is too big for the human brain. Everything is too big for the human mind. We destroy our planet every day because of these nuclear weapons, Tom. We're even changing the climate on our own planet, causing animals to go extinct. 
us humans won't get to live over 100 years. We'll cause our own species to go extinct. And you know how? Because of the... Because of the nuclear weapons. You know why I think that? Because we're the real monsters. This is the most deplorable attempt at trying to be intelligent in a movie that I've ever seen. If you thought this dialogue was smart, I, I, I don't even want to talk to you. Did you just learn about these topics in school? I mean, you're acting like you're the first person to talk about climate change or the universe, okay? Uh, we all know who created the universe. There is an indefinable, mysterious power that pervades everything. I feel it, though I do not see it. It is this unseen power which makes itself felt and yet defies all proof. Causing animals to go extinct. Sorry, I, I didn't I didn't get that. Go extinct. No! So then Godzilla shows up. They growl at each other like they're about to fight and uh, and then that's it. So then Godzilla walks away and leaves Rice Goji alone. And then that's it. So like, what was that? So let me get this straight. These two idiots want to send Rise Goji because he's a Godzilla that wants peace. They blow up the ocean. Rise Goji comes out, walks a little, stands in front of the sun, and then that's it. What? Did you just give up halfway through the movie? What? That bite should have killed him. I guess reality was thrown out the fucking window. And we really got sturdy walls too. So then there's a scene where Thomas is looking on his flip phone. And then there's a selfie he took with John. I'm guessing he's gay for John. I mean, I like this progressive attempt at making two gay characters. So I highly applaud you for that. So, then Tom dies. What the hell? Okay, Vinny isn't the greatest voice actor I know, but you could have given him a lot more than just this. You've given him three movies, and in the end, there's no character arc, and means nothing to the plot. These are your voice actors, Lewis. Give them a quality script that makes sense before you focus on the next Super Mario Zilla scream. <laughs> I've killed Vinny. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> this movie lacked heart. It lacks substance. It felt like you put this movie on a conveyor belt to cash in on the Godzilla 2014 versus Shin Godzilla name for views. So then we go back to Shin Godzilla. He shoots his fire breath. There's an explosion. He roars. More explosions and more fire breath. He gets up and then two fire breath. Then he falls. More fire breath. Explosions. And then there's a trailer in this fight. <laughs> Why and then uh, that's uh, he. I didn't think it was virtually possible for this movie to get any worse, but the end credit scene. Hi, somebody's sending me this video because they're a little freaked out about something. You've been telling them a little too much about your sex life. I want to know how Lewis did this, but he managed to make in these two minutes, the last 45 minutes of this movie, completely fucking pointless. And you ask, why? Oh, is this a good movie? Are you that fucking ignorant? I think Alex can explain for me how I think Lewis approached these last three movies. It looks like Louis Duran is trying to become like DC Comics. Kaizilla is like Marvel in a sense, and Louis is like DC. Kaizilla has had like so many monsters. In his recent movie, he had like four monsters in it because he had so many movies of development. But here comes Louis, he's like the late guy somewhere to DC, how they're late with their franchise. So he's trying to fit in as many characters as he can. DC's biggest problem is that 
they can't come up with a plan. I have a goddamn plan! They set up all these sequels without focusing on their own damn movie. And a familiar example of this is the Godzilla anime trilogy, where they forget the purpose of even making the film they're currently working on, only to say, STOP! Uh, Hammer Time. Uh, the next one is gonna be better. Why is there a blue Rodan? You've made it clear it's the last chapter in the series, and even then, basically nothing has happened in this movie since you've undone everything in these two minutes of the end credits scene. You didn't plan this out. Dialogue didn't make any sense. Like polar bears. Polar bears. And in the end of it all, you could have just dropped every human character scene in this movie, and the result would have been the same. Most of us can agree that the visual effects in this movie are pretty hit or miss. I guess they- I'm, I'm still trying to come up with who did the actual visual effects for this movie. You may <laughs> send this video because somebody thinks you're pretty fucking cool. In fact, they think you're really cool. They've met you, they've checked you out, and they've seen how you are. And they've realized that you're just a great person. I guess the only way I can compare the visual effects of this movie between Jaws Man's effects and Lewis's effects is by grabbing these two shot glasses. Uh, so this first glass here of orange juice is an actual representation of the amount of effects Jaws Man actually did for the film. And as you can see here, it's a little over 50%. Now this shot glass of I don't even know what is representative of the effects Lewis did. Now taking these two glasses, I'm gonna show you a representation of how much effects each person did mix into one. So I'm just gonna take uh, some of Lewis's effects here and pour it into that, like that, uh, just fucking spilling all over. Now, in the end, this is pretty much a metaphor for how the effects look throughout the whole film. And as you can see, Jaws Man's is put on the forefront, being the orange juice, and behind that orange juice, uh, Lewis's effects. <coughs> Uh, pretty much represents the flaws were hidden by Jaws Man's. And now we drink. <laughs> Basically, what I'm trying to say is that Lewis got someone with experience and talent, and yet in the end he said, ah, fuck it, and as he did the effects himself. And it's kind of funny because you could tell when it's a Jaws Man effect and when it's a Lewis effect. I mean, you've got these stunning visual effects throughout the movie, uh, Godzilla's atomic breath, uh, the spines glowing, and then we have Lewis's effects over here, which pretty much just shoot all of that hard work in the face and make it kind of pointless. Maybe it would have been actually more efficient if you let Jaws Man have full control over the effects. Not a portion, all of it. And because he didn't have full control over the effects, we get these Frankensteins of scenes of effects that basically don't hold up remotely well. And yes, Jaws Man did these effects. They aren't good by a long shot, but am I blaming Jaws Man for this? No, of course not. Because that's why we have directors. Their job is to direct a shot or a scene when it doesn't correlate to their vision. But Lewis doesn't have a vision, so of course this isn't gonna happen! So, I just recently found out that there are exactly 100 cuts exactly of visual effects in this movie. And as we know who did the effects, let's find out how many he actually did. So you did fucking half of the effects. Yep. So why did he make it seem like you're the effects guy in this movie? I don't know. <laughs> I guess I made like all like the super bad effects look better. Jossman did 53 visual effects shots out of 100. So, before giving him all the credit, uh, let's just make him do actually more next time, alright buddy? This movie looks disgusting. From the color palace, to the saturation, to the exposure, it's all been meddled with. And for some reason, there's just this urge from Lewis that every scene has to be edited. Just don't touch the scene! Simple as that! Look how this shot came out that I got outside just now. Does it need any- Yes it does! Oh yeah, this scene again. So he has some ear ringing, right? 
usually when people do this in movies, they like making all the surrounding noise sound like reverb or echo, but <laughs> you made the music do this too. Why is the hue purple? Everything else now looks green. And for some reason, every time the camera is edited and posts a shake, there's these obnoxious lines growing out of the subject of the shot. So let's talk about music. Music. Nothing special here. Uh, a lot of it is just taken from the Hans, the Zimmers. You're basically having a conversation. Pretty sure I heard GojuFan93's funeral music in here. I just got done watching a video and I made it sound a little sad. So yeah, music. Um, is there anything else we need to shit on? Cinematography is fine, I guess. I mean, it's not creative in any ways. I mean, all you did was just shake the camera violently. Human scenes were shot pretty bland. I mean, it's just medium shot, medium shot, medium shot, medium shooter, medium, you shoot her, a medium shot. What happened to this shot? It looked fine right here, but then the lighting looks totally different here. So while a lot of these shots don't make any sense, there's a few decent ones here, like these. This is like the worst shot in the whole movie. Why? This mouse! Why did you film these two printed out flat sheets in a wide? You can see the edges! Is that a cassette? Cassettes! Why is John covered with a dirty crumpled up doctor's coat? Is that hair? Why did you show it again? So set design is kind of a mixed bag full of a uh, Jurassic World uh, Mattel figures in a Publix bag. And these being the dog shit kind of Hasbro set figures. <clears throat> that just remind me that I'm currently playing with these hunks of plastic Hasbro figures and not the cool Mattel ones. Basically, some look pretty decent. Until you find out that Lewis found another way to make a detrimental set of cassettes. Cassettes. And with some good old nostalgic problems Lewis has had before with sets, I've now officially labeled any atrocious looking sets as a cassette. Pokemon 3 Movie Pat Hurricane Yvonne 2004. Wow! Is that mold? Okay, so you've used the same board since Force of Nature 1 in 2016. Part of me is torn because Lewis actually looks like he spent some time and patience on some of these sets, but then that's overshadowed with these interior sets. You like this cool city set? Well, too bad! You're gonna have to look at this creepy cowgirl covered in Smucker's grape jam with my dandruff covered hair spiking out of the ground. You want actual scenery with a sense of scope and scale? Get out of here! You're gonna have to look at this 300 tall man standing aimlessly in front of the Chicago Tower. You want some common sense? Well, you're not gonna have it! You can take it. So, the two Godzillas fight. And, and, and this is the fight. Godzilla Force of Nature Chapter 3 gets a 5 out of 10. You wanna know why this movie didn't work, Lewis? You had too much control. You did everything in the credits, and while that's not always a bad thing, it damaged what this film wanted to be. And at the end of the day, this movie didn't have any vision. We're up to Chapter 3 in this series, and I still have no fucking clue what's going on. And there is no story. And the only thing brought over from these three films is this guy, and uh, this guy. And did they do anything to influence the plot in any way? No. So, why have him in the movie? You could have just made the movie about the monsters entirely. There's this constant flip-flop on the two types of films you could have done. The voice acting was just pretty bad. I mean, there is some talent. You got Ready Player One star James Cooley. Same with the effects. He didn't direct Jaws Man enough to fix this. And once again, this is an actual fight that was left in the movie. 
these figures aren't even moving, they're just sliding on the ground to figure bash. Things I liked in the movie. I liked the one attempt at bringing atmospheres in scenes such as this. I genuinely liked these sets, and I thoroughly enjoyed some visual effects like these. So why am I making this review? Sure, Lewis and I are friendly towards each other, but I don't care because I want these films to get actually better. That's why I spent a half an hour talking about this shit. I'm gonna be honest with you. This movie would have been a 6 out of 10. It would have, but I gave it a 5. Because you don't want to learn. You're not open to criticism. If you're shutting your ears out because I sound harsh, well keep them shut because later on in life, people will be harsher on you if you don't want to learn. I gave up an entire month of my time stopping my movie, my projects, to help you. To only list the flaws, because that gives you the opportunity to realize and fix. And it is not my job. I'm not going to tell you what you have to do. I spent a month on this video because I do care. This isn't about what pleases me, okay? That is delusion right there. That is delusion at its finest. And I know Lewis will get better. I'm just waiting for him to get his come to Jesus type moment so he can actually realize the problems with this film. Stop doing videos.